thinking about ideas and I'm thinking about objects. And really this is coming out of, uh, well, some kind of an attempt to understand for myself the relationship between um, concepts and, uh, and kind of phenomenologically described lived experience. And since the worlds I live in seems to be populated by a whole bunch of objects, I'm just wondering how the rela what the relationship is between those apparent objects and these things I'm considering ideas or thoughts, perhaps, or concepts, and whether there's a systematic relationship between those. So I think if I'm going to talk about that or think about that, I have to consider first what it means to consider an idea as an object. I think there is something of a history of that. I haven't really done enough research on it to completely feel comfortable approaching it from different angles and having all the kind of uh, sensory engagement with that structure of ideas. But uh, I'm, I'm kind of starting to feel it. I mean, I certainly I know it's had a, a long history in philosophy. I know um, Descartes talks about ideas as objects. I know it comes up in Locke. Uh, I think it's in Leibniz. Uh, I think Kant talks about it in a critical way. I think it appears in weird places. I, think, I know um, Rudolf Steiner, I think. Which I'm, not, I'm not considering him on a, on a par for the stuff with those other names, but uh, I think some of this stuff is quite interesting in terms of a description of particular kinds of experiences. The, uh, I think he talks about uh, ideas as objects in a certain kind of way. Uh, I think we also, uh, well, I mean, it, 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 it's evidenced in our language, certainly, because we talk about ideas. When we talk about ideas, we use nouns to frame those ideas. Uh, so, for example, the mind. Mind is clearly not an object. It's a, some kind of process. Uh, but the fact that we, we use a noun term to articulate it and put the... Uh, put the, uh, what's it called, the, the direct article, the, in front of it, indicates that we are at least partially thinking about mind as an object, or uh, the state. And clearly the state is not an object. The, uh, what else, the university, I work at the university, so I, I use a noun to describe the university I work at, even though it clearly isn't an object. It has buildings which are objects, possibly. If all those buildings were knocked down and replaced by different buildings, it would still be the same university, so the object itself doesn't change. Uh, so again, we have this idea, I think this is something I mentioned before, actually, Ray Jackendorf talks about this. He talks about ver nouns and verbs. Uh, so yeah, a lot of our conce uh, the abstract concepts that we think about, that we name every day, are named using nouns which I think is indicative of their status as objects of some kind in our cognition. Are we using, the, yeah, if I was going to use the same kind of language I've used before, I would be saying that the, the mechanisms, if you like, of our cognition, and I'm not entirely happy about the word mechanism, it's a bit machine it, but the, uh, the mechanisms of our cognition, which normally or historically have served the purpose of identifying and, and allowing for uh, engagement with objects are doing double duty and are being uh, repurposed to allow us to conceive of abstract concepts as if they were objects. So it's conceptual metaphors that really. I'm talking about that. Uh, what else can I say about ideas as objects? Well, where this is coming on to, I think this is something I may have mentioned before, and I'm just trying to i just say approach this from different angles to get a, a better set of triangulated data points around it. What this is going toward is to, uh, is to think about whether the, the way that we understand different ideas differently, when we conceive of things like the state as a different kind of entity to the mind, or when we conceive of the mind as a different kind of entity to a university, and all of these other abstract conceptual objects. Whether we're, uh, whether we're also mapping that across from our experience of physical objects in the material world, and whether the variables in the one map across to the variables in the other. 
I think they do, well, obviously, I don't know why they wouldn't be saying this. So that's where I'm kind of going with this. Come on, please, let's go.